Hey, and welcome back to From Is to Ought. This episode will outline the guide for our journey on fake news. So let's kick it off. Here's a few important questions. What is fake news? And what can and should we do about it? The importance of getting these questions right, or at least not catastrophically wrong, will become clearer over the next 18 months as we explore the expansive landscape concerned with digital platforms, information maladies, and information governance. Getting any of these issues wrong means that we risk devolving into warring factions, unable to discern truth from falsity, all vying for primacy in battles between post-truth ideologies, where the stakes are raised by the surveillance and suppressive capacities of governing bureaucracies and the deceptive payload of deep fakes. I do not claim to have the canonically correct answers to each of these questions. However, I hope my quant background and time spent studying this problem makes me a credible and helpful guide as you develop answers for these questions yourself. My fear is that if we individually fail to develop these answers for ourselves, our individual liberties and national sovereignty may give way to a tyranny of the anointed. That's why I've set out on this series and asked you to join me. Over the next year and a half, we'll encounter the ideas of researchers, journalists, cultural leaders, and representatives from media rating organizations, governments, and digital platforms, at least hopefully. When I cannot secure interviews with desired guests, or where I just wish to introduce ideas of my own, I will provide podcasts such as this one, where I will monologue on a set of topics and provide the referent material in the episode artifact, which will always be linked in the show notes. To facilitate broader awareness and enriching collective conversation, I encourage you to share the episodes and artifacts that you find insightful. So we begin our journey with this episode. The first thing I'd say is let's view this as a joint venture, where we'll meet fascinating people and grapple with the challenges and apparent paradoxes and the peripheral admonishment from those who would rather tell us what to believe and demand that we believe it. As I said, I'll be your cartographer and guide for this journey, attempting to synthesize research and commentary to help us navigate the landmark features of the digital information and governance spaces. There will be eight of these distinct features, at least insofar as I can imagine presently. We'll touch on some of them several times, but each in unique ways. As we traverse this underexplored yet civically crucial territory and converse with leading minds from different backgrounds, these eight themes will give rise to the three goals I have for this podcast series. The goals are, one, to raise awareness about what research into digital news information affords us to say about, quote, fake news and what it most certainly does not. Two, to equip the audience with knowledge and heuristics to navigate the vast amounts of online information more effectively in order that you can enjoy the technological fruits while still being discerning in your disposition. And three, to uphold genuine notions of expertise, institutional credibility, objectivity, and digital pluralism by highlighting how such ideals and ambitions have been undermined and had their pretext weaponized by cynical agents. So, what are the eight themes that we'll encounter in pursuit of these lofty goals? Well, let's start with the construct of fake news itself. Whatever you think of the label, the phenomenon has three distinctive elements that are important to get right from the outset. First, fake news is not trivial. It's also not new. And finally, it's not exclusive to any single politician, political party, or news network. The second and related theme is the surprisingly diverse and independent ways in which fake news and its related terms are defined. Appreciating that fake news is non-trivial, non-novel, and non-exclusive, and that there are numerous ways in which people conceptualize the phenomenon will ground us in the actual diagnostic challenges of this area as well as those when developing solutions. The third major theme focuses more directly on research findings, highlighting key psychological, technological, and communications factors. Even in some of the most honest and scientifically sober pursuits, we'll explore fundamental differences in where and how to draw lines around what constitutes fake news and whether, quote, authoritative approaches to remediation are appropriate and necessary, or whether bottom-up solutions may hold promise. Primary examples of concepts we'll explore include cognitive reflection, confirmation bias, truth discernment, algorithmic amplification and suppression, trust, media literacy, and digital pluralism. This theme will also touch on some meta-theories that will assist in elucidating the, kind of the contours of the fake news phenomenon. Examples include network gatekeeping and agenda setting. While I won't agree with everything that's presented, the ideas are worthy of your valuable time and consideration, and to that end, rest assured that those who don the veil of science to launder advocacy as research have been undersampled as guests for this podcast series. Which brings us to our fourth theme. I've included some guests that people may find controversial, but I've included them because they're better equipped to speak to certain elements or instances of fake news that seldom show up in research and or occupy an important niche of the phenomenon. While this decision may seem paradoxical, given that I've opted not to invite some of the self-styled disinformation experts from legacy media and advocacy groups, these decisions were made in order to bring you the deepest and most comprehensive public survey of fake news and its related problems. 
therefore will encounter those with something genuine to say, and who in my estimation take the problem seriously, even if narrowly. For all guests, controversial or not, earnest good faith pushback will be proffered in the hope of facilitating a deeper understanding on the principles, assumptions, and limitations that define the boundaries of our understanding on these issues. Where lessons can be learned from past controversies, I'll ask about those forthrightly. You see, we've cast a wide net to over 30 people across a variety of disciplines, so there's bound to be unavoidable and necessary disagreement if this series is to empower you, the audience, to be more informed on these issues going forward. Therefore, any appeals to credentials or controversies of others or the lack thereof are unhelpful, as far as I can tell, and they don't really move us towards those three goals I outlined earlier. Recall raising awareness about what we can and can't say about, quote, fake news, developing the knowledge and heuristics to navigate information online, and three, upholding genuine notions of expertise, institutional credibility, objectivity, and pluralism. So, to our fifth theme, we will return to the research literature and introduce the realm of fact-checking. Here, there's two primary areas that need more attention. One is how fake news is operationalized in studies, and two, the potential external validity issues that exist therein. The former relates to how fake news versus non-fake news is defined, distinguished, and measured, while the latter deals with the bounds on generalizability of some of the research findings that currently exist. Next is a pivotal area, dealing with semantic sleights of hand, semantic overload, and lexical deflections. This, our sixth theme, is what we'll encounter when we talk about interventions and digital information governance. You see, the consequences of scope creep mean that reliable meanings of terms are precluded, and those who seek to wield their lexicon as a bludgeon are empowered. From, quote, censorship to the phrase fake news itself, to the pejoratives that are so recklessly bandied about in line, this theme will highlight how such overreach results inevitably in tragedy for collective sense-making. Next, our penultimate theme revolves around the direct solicitation of advice from our guests on how to be more discerning online, to identify ways interested parties might try and manipulate your perceptions, and how we can each create an information portfolio that keeps us more civically informed. And our final theme will be a meta one. We will explore these topics with the rigor fit for halls in Cambridge, but with a disposition more commonly found in a conversation with a friend over your favorite brew, coffee, or beer. We're going to aim for a series of edifying conversations fit for the cigar lounge rather than that of the faculty, for the pub rather than academic publication. As far as I'm concerned, genuine science and debate that shape the civic body are capable of being communicated, and therefore, so too must they be. In closing, it's useful for you, and, and perhaps especially for me, to remember that I'm only a guide and cartographer on this journey. I'm aware of major features in the fake news landscape and have ventured forth in my own right. However, I'm certainly not omniscient, and the train has not been fully mapped by others. Thus, it is likely we'll encounter new themes along the way in addition to those just discussed. And when we do, we'll meet them with the same courageous mettle and inquiring spirit that brought us to that point. This is a long road, but the insights and lessons learned along the way make it compelling, and the risks of us not going are far scarier than the journey that lies ahead. So, get packed, spread the word, and make ready. We depart for our first interview in three weeks. I'll see you then. From Is to Ought is a FreedomCast Network production. For more information, please visit freedomcast.us and freedomcast.locals.com. Stay honest, stay rigorous, and keep speaking freely.